once in a while I get something completely wrong and micro LED is one of them. Okay. So my first exposure to micro LED in the real world was Sony's Ah, it burns! That's pretty hot. That's pretty hot. I, is, there, is there a reason we don't just turn on the, uh, the normal ones? They're turning on, they just take like, Oh, are you minutes. sure? But I don't know if they're turning on. I don't know if they take 10 minutes. I think, yeah, I, we'd see them glowing by now. I don't think they're on. I'm happy with this, it looks cool. <laughs> yeah, all right. Dramatic. Um, so my first exposure to micro LED was- Although I'm not the one looking in the light. <laughs> um, was with the Sony Cletus display. Yep. And have you heard of the Cletus? Yeah, yeah, that was okay. at CES. Oh, did you it, see it? I wasn't there that year. But they okay. had it the next year, didn't they? Okay, so the Cletus display is really trippy because the way that it, it's like a modular display, and we've mm -hmm. seen technologies like this before, but it's a unique one because it's got these panels that are about this big, and then you just assemble them together into whatever size and resolution display you want. Now that's not unique. What's unique is that the Cletus display uses an emissive display technology like OLED, except it's not OLEDs, it's micro LEDs. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they've got these tiny, tiny micro LEDs, red, green, and blue, and they emit directly from the display, so there's no backlight or anything like that, but the way that they achieve near perfect blacks on a Cletus display is that, I forget what the exact number is, but uh, it's, it's over- It's like made of black dots. No, 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 it's Isn't not- Isn't there like a bunch of black dots that you can see if you go really close to it? No. Is so like an illusion when you back up? Uh, it's a little bit different than that. Those, so they actually allowed me to go up to it. Uh, here, I'm just going to Yeah, I remember it. Everyone was, uh, everyone was tense. I'm like, no, don't go that close. Okay, ultimate picture, blah, blah, blah. Where is it? Okay. Uh, oh, where's it? Here we go. Okay, right. Because, so the reason they can get nearly perfect blacks out of it is that 99% of the Cletus display doesn't emit light. Weird. It's just, it's actually black. So you're looking at this giant display made that, that emits light, they're micro LEDs, they're super bright, but they're actually tiny. They're micro LEDs. And all of the area around them is just black. Are they clustered or are they spread out with lots of black in between? They look like this. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so you've got a red, green, and a, it's either a blue or a yellow, I actually don't remember, but you've got three sub-pixels for each pixel, and the vast majority of the display is actually black. But because of the way that light spreads from a source, you actually have to get about 18 inches from the screen in order for, and it's weird, your eyes like go weird as you move through oh, the threshold. kind of click in. And then all of a sudden you go from seeing the entire image, which has no perceivable gaps in it, to seeing just these dots and they don't look like anything. They That's just look- That's so trippy. It's so weird. Okay. So I thought that micro LED displays were specifically this technology. Okay. I didn't ever stop and think about that a micro LED is just I think. A small LED, and yeah. you could do anything you wanted with it. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't think about that there were other ways that people were planning to use micro LEDs. Okay, so I was talking to NVIDIA because they were talking about these displays that they've, that they've created with over 500 um, local dimming zones. And they were talking about like, yeah, you know, we see a, a clear path forward, because I'd love wait, to wait, see- Wait, 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 which NVIDIA displays have over 500 dimming zones? Well, the one that we just checked out, for one. That's not NVIDIA. Well, okay. That was Asus. R okay. Are, are you talking about the BFGDs? I'm talking about the NVIDIA driver module and the um, the full array backlight control module. That's oh, NVIDIA yeah. that okay, creates okay. that. Sure. Yeah. So, um, okay, that's actually an important point to clarify. So they were talking about how um, you know going from 384 zones to over 500 zones to using mini LEDs to micro LEDs. They see this very clear technology progression, whereas like. I love an OLED G-Sync display. And I was like, hey, you guys working on that? And they're kind of like, you know, they're vague, right? They're evasive. We're, we're working on everything. 
you know, what are we, we're a technology company, what are we not working? Like they basically, it was a not, total non-answer. And when I drilled down, um, where I ultimately, like they wouldn't answer any questions about it, but what I ultimately realized is that because OLED is an emissive display with completely different characteristics in terms of color mixing at different brightnesses, um, you know, making them color accurate, um, the way that the pixels switch, or rather they, they don't take a long time to switch. Like NVIDIA would have to completely reinvent the G-Sync module I see. to run an OLED display. So when they were talking about this clear path forward to mini LED and micro LED, I totally misunderstood that they were talking about something like a Cletus display, right. an emissive display using micro LEDs. What they were actually talking about was using micro LEDs to have a much greater degree of granularity in a full array backlight. I see. Okay, so. So what they're looking for as a business then is, is evolution rather than revolution. It's like, we have this tried and tested stuff. We just need to iterate to make it, you know, just do this, but do it harder. So do what, it smaller, then tries it. So what I ultimately came away with was that full array backlighting on LCD displays is not going anywhere. And where we're probably headed is many, many, many more zones. Maybe where we get to the point where each zone is a mini LED or a micro LED so that the blooming becomes much less. I don't remember what my point was in all of this anymore. I think we were just talking about uh, micro LED coming out eventually. Oh, and right. Apple investing right. in Right, yes. So micro LED coming out eventually, yes. But maybe not in the form that you might think because a micro LED display could be an emissive display, or it could just be really, really small LEDs, micro LEDs, mm -hmm. behind a regular old LCD panel. So yes, micro LED displays are coming. We just don't know exactly what form they'll take. And after that meeting with NVIDIA, Why, I had a better understanding. It doesn't make sense to keep them as transmissive displays because when you have that many of them, well, it depends how many you have. If they're at almost the level of being like for each pixel, is a zone, then the beauty of it is that you turn it off and you get the, the black levels of OLED. Yes. Right? And the pixel response times, because the reason that LCDs have higher pixel response times than OLED is that because it actually takes time the for the liquid layer. crystal to twist. That takes time and to untwist. Yes. And that's also related to why it's not as black, because even when it's fully twisted, some light's still going to get through. So why would you give up on all those awesome benefits? Because you've invested the last 25 years in LCD. Then get disrupted. And you know how they work. Get disrupted. That, but that's it, because you know how they work. Because a lot of the time you can build, even using an inferior technology, you can build a better display when you understand the technology at play better. And so yes, get disrupted, but the flip side of that is <laughs> Apple's display is already sort of groundbreaking in terms of its contrast and peak brightness and all that. The thing is, the thing is six thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So, but so is a BFGD. What's the emissive one going to be? That's exactly my point. How disruptive is that technology going to be if it costs hmm. fifty grand or whatever? You know what I mean? Well, they should eventually. It depends. They could end up in phones. It'd be great in your watch. Yes. You know, and I wonder if LG. I, I'm sure LG is also um, investing in it. It's just kind of interesting because they also are going so hard into OLED, but they don't want to be caught flat-footed either, right? No one wants to be caught flat-footed. I think LG is still pretty heavily invested in OLED. Only time will tell.